wonder if I might, I might ask you about um, the role of collage in mm -hmm. some of the poems in Cloud Corporation. Yeah. I, because I think that sometimes when you tackle a very, very large social or political subject, that's, that's when you kind of bring together two kind of opposite texts. Three poems that I used a certain procedure that had been given to me by a friend of mine, the poet Jeffrey G. O'Brien, he challenged me to write a poem given a set procedure using um, the Patriot Act. I think that sometimes collaging and a certain kind of levity, a kind of uh, spiritedness of making allows mm. me to feel more comfortable uh, folding in some matters of great and public import yeah. without it seeming, you know, um, too strained or too heavy hands that are ponderous. Yeah. No, but but it's kind of like in Hamlet, like by, by indirection, find direction out something. Yeah, like yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. And yeah. come to it right like a guy. discovery rather than deploy it from the right. beginning. Like, here's my thesis statement, <laughs> uh, you know, and I'll write a poem to yeah. follow. I don't, I don't care for that kind of, and I don't even think that way, you know? I mean, I kind of move around a lot in my thinking and not necessarily productively. And then I come upon the discovery I would say that two of the poems I read were poems that had kind of taken part of their, their procedure or idea from a television show. That kind of embrace of popular culture in a kind mm -hmm. of unselfconscious way as poetic material, that certainly seems to me something that the poets of my generation are, are engaging with and, and interested in. And I can't imagine those poems being allowed to be even heard without someone like John. I, I, f I feel like John is so responsible in a way for kind of oxygenating a staid way of looking at ambitious and difficult poetry for so long. And his work has always been filled of so many crossings, improbable ones, you know. Um, a poem of his that I can't get over is called Daffy Duck in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It begins, something strange is creeping across me. Or is it over me? Oh. Over me, all right. The idea that someone would write a, a three-and-a-half-page poem inspired by a Chuck Avery mm -hmm. cartoon that references obscure French drama, uh, water sports, <laughs> and is the most Miltonic-sounding poem in the English language that I know of outside of Milton. Uh, that kind of astonishes me. Popular culture fascinated me. Daffy Duck, for instance. Uh, I don't think I ever saw him on the screen until I was in, living in Paris and went to an intellectual animated cartoon evening where, <laughs> where they, were, they had French intellectual discussions afterwards. Qu'est-ce que vous avez pensé du Woody Woodpecker ce soir? I happened to be <laughs> carrying Paradise Lost when I went to a Festival of anim Animated Cartoons at the, the Museum on Columbus Circle, whatever it's now called. It was the Huntington Hartford Museum. And mm -hmm. somehow these two things kind of melded together. And I've, the uh, plot of Paradise Lost is somewhat similar to the plot of Daffy Duck in Hollywood. <laughs>